Hello and welcome to lovely Cheryl Rafter from Vancouver in Canada. She's today's guest on my Wild Woman podcast and I am just love having guests from all over the world. She's a courageous comeback coach and that caught my attention when I listened to Cheryl on another podcast. So what I want to just maybe start with Cheryl is just asking you, what exactly is a courageous comeback? <laughs> Thank you, yeah. Celine, for, for having me. And um, courageous comeback, you know, we always have things in our life that um, sometimes stop us, you know, changes. So, you know, one of the things that I went through, you know, at age 40, I became single after 20 years, you know, so I, I had no idea who I was. I didn't know what I liked, what I wanted to do, even just as me as a woman didn't know you know because for when you have a partner you become us you know you're not a me right mm -hmm. so um you know I had to come back from that and and reinvent myself and and know who you know who I was what I wanted to do what I like to eat what I you know just everything just so you know coming back from that and then in my 50s I decided that you know what? I didn't like where I lived anymore. It was cold. There was lots of snow. So I packed up and I moved to Vancouver knowing one person. So, you know, again, I, I come back from that. So, you know, at any given time, you can, you can come back from whatever that is, you know, if you've got kids that have left or divorce or business and, and just reinvent who you are and, and come back courageously and, create your life the way you want it to be okay really nice I really like that word courage as well because it seems to be a big part of you know everyone's life I think we're all faced with challenge or crisis at, at yeah. some point so what what does courage mean for you when you talk about courage and I know you've also co-written a chapter or book I mean it's ignite courage and you wrote a chapter on that topic so yeah. Just maybe talk a little bit about courage in your own life in terms of your story, maybe a little bit of your background. Um, right. In terms, yeah. Okay. Well, you know what? Courage is, is something different for everybody, obviously, right? Some people take, it takes courage just to get out of bed. But for me, um, courage is taking the action steps to, to do the things that you want to do. Um, you know, six months ago, I didn't think I was going to be an international bestselling author. I, had the opportunity to to write my story and and be a yes and so putting up my hand took courage right for me to do that it I had no idea what I was getting myself into but I knew the person that directed me in that way I trusted him he's never sent me on the wrong path um so I thought okay you know what I'm going to do this and it you know, it, it does, it takes courage to say yes and, and to be in action and to want to change. And it's just been an amazing journey. Like it's, it's been very powerful to, to write my story, you know, because sometimes we think, oh, we don't have a story. There's no story there, right? I'm just living my life and doing what I'm doing. But once you start to sit down and actually go back and look at it and say, you know what, I really did do all of this I did accomplish this this is you know what really happened to me and I think one of the things I got present to was you're not your story it's just what happened to you so you can come back and be courageous and powerful and not be a victim of what the circumstances were that help you know put you into the situations mm, yeah I really like that as well around being a victim because I think yeah. the world is shifting, though, and that's I never really understood that until I got cancer as well. And mm -hmm. yeah. just the similar to like what even reading a little bit about you and I identified so much. And I think so many women and people will um, because, you know, we're all faced. I don't think anyone is, you know, escapes some sort of crisis or challenge in their life. And I do think it's how you look at it. I mean, it sounds yeah. very and I'm a big believer in everything does happen for you, like as hard as it is, um, yeah. you know, it always. So if you were to um, just even take us back. So you're saying in the last six months you were asked to co-author a book. It's that recent. Yeah. 
Wow. Yeah. Okay. In June. In June. Yeah. In June of yeah. 2023. Yeah, June of 2023. I was at a fundraising hiking event, and I met um, I met the publisher of Ignite Publishing, and um, she was looking for people to to come in as a co-author. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. Um, <clears throat> in the book and I thought you know what I don't really have a story you know I, but I, I just said yes I'm like okay let's do it and it's been an amazing journey and the people I've met and the things I've done has just been very powerful oh. and it, so can you go maybe take us a little bit back you said a lot changed obviously when your marriage broke down so if you were to describe like Cheryl prior to all this and your life I mean it sounds like you've had a number of comebacks as you call them or adversities just maybe talk about you don't have to go into anything you know too personal that you don't want to but just I think for people to see what was just how those things played out in your life and changed you oh my god I don't even recognize that person anymore but um a couple things that um you know I I was at a job where I didn't like it you know, I, I started looking at, okay, going forward, is this really where I want to be in 10 years? And I did not like it. Uh, through my marriage, you know, it's never easy when, you, when you're when you in a marriage, you have to work on it for sure. Uh, I always want, I guess I was always looking for something more. Um, you know, I would get laid off of jobs and then I'd be off for months and then I, you know, have to come back and find another job. And so it, it just puts you in, you know, that different direction. But I think um, for me, it was really my confidence. You know, I think my belief system in, in you know, and I think maybe a lot of women get that, you know, if you're in an abusive or you're dependent on, on somebody you lose your confidence, your self-esteem, you, you don't know really who you are. And so, um, you know, at age 40, to start over again, you know, is like, especially when you lose your job, become 40 and become single all within like in a whole month. It's like, okay. you know, the whole universe just says, okay, this is it. You're, <laughs> you know, so it, it, it took me a couple of years to, to really come back and and feel good about myself you know it it took a long time so um and then you know of course in my 50s you know you turn 50 and you're like okay (laughs) there's a midlife crisis maybe going on here right so you know what what should I be doing at 50 kind of thing right Yeah. yeah and before before when you say so before 40 you said you were married 20 years yeah and so there was obviously a Cheryl before you got married as well so yeah of um, course you know can you was there something like in terms of looking back I always feel now for some reason I can tune back more into my childhood now than I could during my life it's like I've sort of connected with that aspect of myself and I can feel more what I was like with a child and it's like going back going I'm nearly picking yeah. up pieces of my childhood. Is there a Cheryl that you can remember that maybe you lost aspects of, or how would you describe it just for anyone, this, this story? I think there's a common thread through all of our stories, even though the story yeah. is very different. We go on of a similar course. type of path of finding ourselves. And so, yeah, just yeah. maybe talk a little bit about that, maybe before. Okay, you know, well, and that's part of what my story was in, in my, you know, my book my chapter was leap forward but um as a child I was you know the oldest I had two younger sisters um not always easy my my dad was very abusive you know so I remember you know many not saying that there wasn't good times because there definitely was good times you know holidays that we got to go together and and things that we did um but I, I felt like I always had to be saving you know, always had to put out fires because I never knew when my dad was going to be, you know, explosive or, you know, and having to take care of my, my sisters as the oldest child, my mom had to go to work, you know, so I had to make sure they got school or lunches or, you know, snacks, Mm -hmm. that, that kind of thing. And you know what, I, I really looking back at it, it, I think it really, um, made me responsible, you know, like I had to take on that at, like age 10 or 11, I think is the earliest that I remember doing that. And, um, 
you know, it, it taught me to be responsible, like responsible for myself and also responsible um, for other people as well and taking care of them. So, you know, we all have things in our childhood that is, you know, troubling or, you know, not, you know, whether you got bullied at school or, you know, anything like, you know, things like that that we think, oh, my God, how am I ever going to get through this, right? You know, but not knowing that it's bringing us to the future to help us um, be better, you know, as adults. It helps us to overcome some of those adversities and, and be grateful that, you know, we did go through that. Yeah, like it sounds so, would you say that adversity or challenge or difficult times are necessary for sort of growing and sort of reaching your, you know, I don't even like that language, reaching your potential, but you know, the just in terms of the journey of life and, and living a fulfilling life. And do you think that that is a necessary part? Or do you think it's possible to just not say sail through, but have what's your sort of? Um, no, I, I definitely think it is a you know necessary part. I mm -hmm. I believe that um, you know God doesn't give us anything that we can't handle. So you know I think if everything was smooth sailing and you know that brings other problems as well. You know, like if you think about people that are you know, wealthy, they have a different set of problems that we have, you know, but we, you know, I think um, you have to have kind of the yin and yang, the good and the bad, the, you know, the ugly and all of that stuff to really um, grow, you know, grow and expand yourself. Because if everything was all roses, it'd be pretty boring, I think, <laughs> you know, like, you know, it would be, it would be great, but you have you don't know what the difference is if it's all painted for you but you know what everybody has opposites like there's there's no way that you know that's kind of how the universe works it's always good and bad happy sad always you know so yeah i think for sure um having diversities or you know adversities and things that you do mm -hmm. definitely makes you stronger yeah and as if you look back as well, would you say what is the the sort of greatest gift out of all of that? Like all of the challenges and say, I know I, I remember my marriage broke down as well when I was quite young. And that, you know, I think we're all faced, you know, we, we all have very different challenges. Mm -hmm. And I think personally, I feel I chose them. You know, I came here to experience and grow through this. I didn't know it yeah. at the time as I was falling apart. Um but in terms of looking back now, because I think when we're in them, you know, we have to feel them and we have to deal with them. We're not going to be, oh, this is great. I've learned something from this. But yeah. um, looking back now with a bit of hindsight, what would you say was the, the, the greatest gift that came out of your marriage breaking down? Um, if you can. <laughs> um, looking back, the greatest thing mm. is I became stronger. I became independent. And I also... Um, I'm very particular now, like on what I want, you know, it showed me, and I'm not saying my marriage was bad, you know, it, mm -hmm. it was, it was good. You know, you had some bad times, you struggled, you, you work through it. Um, but I believe that it, it makes you stronger. Um, it shows you what you don't want. Um, and you, you learn from it. Right. And you also learn that you were a big part of it, <laughs> you know, and mm. a lot of times you think, oh, I didn't do, like, why did, what did I do wrong? But looking back, you know, I wasn't always easy to live with either, you know, mm. so I think that was a, a big one for me was taking the responsibility that I actually was part of, 100% a part of what was going on. So, mm. yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I know it's not, um, as I said, it's not easy when you're in it. In that time, can I ask you, so, okay, obviously that was a really shocking period. You said within a couple of months, you lost your dumb. And I just think for people listening, we can all, I think, identify with some aspect of either a breakdown of a relationship, losing a job, moving home, grief, yeah. you know, the loss of somebody. How did you, how did you find your way through that? So in the midst of, you know, this happening, 
yeah. how, how did you find your way through it? Because I think that can be really helpful for people to to hear. Yeah, of course. Uh, really, in the beginning, I couldn't stay at home. I because I had nobody there. Um, I could not be alone. That was that was a big thing for me to overcome. Um, was being by myself. Okay. You know, be, because for twenty years I had somebody there. I had someone that I could count on. I could rely on. Somebody was there for me. Mm -hmm. um so you know after that I really I didn't handle it well I was out partying I was out being with with people um for about six months until kind of everything settled and then I moved away I, I decided that um just cutting all ties you know I went to another city um and just started my life over again so I guess that, that took a lot of courage because I, yeah. I didn't know anybody there either. You know, even though it was only three hours away, it was still far away from me, you know. Wow. Yeah. I had never but, been anywhere by myself alone ever. So it really wow. taught me to um, be responsible and, and to take care of myself, whatever that looked like. You know, and it wasn't easy. It was, you know, there was a lot of challenges there as well but i think it made me stronger because of me doing that yeah oh, what yeah. did that lead you to then so obviously you left um where you were living and you moved to was there a reason you picked this town or did you just go i just have to get out of here and be in a different place i can't continue to um, live here and no i don't think there was a, i think it was just close enough that if i needed to come back um, you know, not like where I'm at now. It's like a 13 hour drive to 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 get where you where, where I'm at now. Uh, I just yeah, when I it just came to me actually. It just said, you know what, you gotta go away. Like just something said, go away. So um I had been to that town, Calgary, before and you know, I was aware of it a little bit, but never knew what it was like to live there. And so that's what I did. I just um just yeah. packed up and away I went so <laughs> and what happened after that then what after after I left Calgary yeah uh, I moved back to Edmonton I uh you know I, there were some challenges there I had some medical I had to uh get some an operation on my hands and so I I just you know my family said you know what it's time for you to move back and so I'm like you know this is about a year and a half later and so that's what I did. I, I just packed and moved back, you know, to Edmonton again. And, uh, and it was probably the best thing I could have, have done, you know, because I came back in a different mindset. I didn't, um, mm. you know, I, I wanted to be back in Edmonton. I wanted to be there where before it was like, I don't want to be here. Okay. This is not the path I want to be doing. So, um, you know, it wasn't easy doing that. I, in the beginning I had to move in with my mom and, and, and stay with her for a little while, but um, it it gave me the strength and it got my confidence back, you know, I got back to working and, and making my own money again and, and just taking care of myself, you know, I mm. think that's that's huge, you know, for sometimes women, we, we don't we don't take care of ourselves, yeah. <laughs> yeah. right? You know, yeah. we, we okay. take care of ourselves when we are like down and out and, sick or you know can't do anything mm, else mm, yeah and would yeah. you say I mean that that I can relate to that I mean I've been you know I, I was only married for a short time and I don't have children but still I think it can it, it's often yeah it's just conditioning and often how we're brought up this feeling that we need to be sort of res well I sort of felt this in my life I'm almost responsible for how others are feeling this is a big part of my self-worth so like, did you, like, it sounds, it, I'm not saying it obviously was very difficult for you, but did you get support or like, what were the key things that you came back? You said you were in a different mindset. So what happened um, that you were able to come back within a year and go, okay, now I'm thinking differently about my life and I'm ready to move on. Did something, did you get support around that or what, what shifted? You know, just, just friends, of course. Um, mm. No, I, I think just something shifted in my mind. Like I, I think I healed, obviously. You know, I I let go of, you know, what happened to me. Um, 
never, I wasn't a victim anymore, I think, is what, what the biggest thing that comes to mind right now is, um, because sometimes, you know, we're, we're in that, and it's like, poor me, and, you know, why did this happen, and all of that stuff, so I, I think I just came to, to peace that, you know what, this is what it is, and you can either be the victim, or you can move on and, and start changing your life, so that's what I did. Yeah, but did you have a connection always, like what I found and I think this is often the shift is that I would have as well put a lot of them were encouraged to put a lot of emphasis in the outer world. Like you said, a bit like a victim or this will fix me and I'll do this and I'll get this job. But really, it is an inner. I know we keep hearing this, but I found for yeah. me, it was really coming in and facing and feeling everything. But that also allowed me tap into sort of a, an energy, a much greater power force the universe god that really i got tuned into that helped me sort of shift it's sort of quite a difficult one to articulate sometimes but was there something like that did you feel you know when you're saying shifting from being a victim you know and in terms of the work you're doing now because you're obviously helping other women who have gone through adversity in different ways so is that a part of it like was that a is that a, do you think an important component that shift from that sort of outer perspective of the world to more an inner? Oh yeah, definitely. And you know what, at the time I, I didn't really think about it because I didn't grow up with religion and, you know, but definitely spiritually for yeah. sure, you know, there is always um, something as long as you're open to receiving it. And I think that was the key for me was mm. just going oh, okay, what is this? You know, there's something there. And, Mm. you know, it is your inner power as well. You know, you listen to your gut feeling. You listen to um, those little signs of saying, okay, is this the right thing? So, you know, is that the universe is, you know, definitely because we're we're powerful. We're powerful beings, right? And if we just take the time to listen Mm -hmm. to what is being said to us, um it doesn't direct us in the wrong way in a way it yeah. usually is you know and that's why you know that was one of the things when I decided to move back and um, the big thing was my friends are like why why don't you move back home right and so then I went back and a, a month later it something just clicked that okay you know what things are not working out here right now and this is not where I should be and so so yeah definitely there is that universe higher power little voice that you listen to um that is guiding you and i and i do it more so now you know in the past year really have just taken that on to to listen to what what the universe is saying to you yeah and i think like i don't even see it in a religious sense like you it's just I think the, the key moment for me and when I just listen to you, I'm just really interested with other women and other people how the experience is. I, I think the number one thing I would say for me was surrender. I'm still surrendering. I can't say oh, yeah. I surrendered. <laughs> <laughs> I surrendered a certain amount when I had cancer, but that that allowed what you just described. And I think oh, yeah. that is often the challenge because we're all controlling, controlling, but you know, we're trying to we're trying to do the best we can in life and we're taught to go out yeah. and do but I, I just and I know sometimes we have to find that sometimes, you know, we have to have the courage, like you speak, to go, yeah. OK, I let go. And yeah. uh, <laughs> I love what you say, because I think it's really helpful. I think the more we can all help each other, because I think the world is, we know, in a fairly state of crisis and yeah. there's an evolution that's happening, but it's a positive Definitely. thing. But it's going to yeah. involve us facing crisis. So the more I think like messages like that that you're saying you know I can totally totally say the same the once I started to surrender this voice started and I started to slowly slowly you know uh, listen to it and it sounds like that's what you've been doing like so that's obviously a a key part is it of of like I suppose the shift and getting you to where you are now and the work you're doing Oh, it, it's been a huge part. Um, back in December, I had a a situation with my with my nephew being in the hospital, and that was a huge surrender for me. Like I I couldn't do anything. Like that was like mm-hmm. like one of the 
probably the biggest things I've ever had to go through um, when somebody is in the hospital and you can't do anything. <laughs> it makes me emotional right now. So, um, you know, talking about surrender, it's like I had to let go. It, it was like, you, and even now, I still have to let go, <laughs> you know, of, like you said, the control, um, thinking it should be a different way. Why isn't, you know, why aren't they getting it? You know, all of those things that you kind of put around thinking people should be doing, you have to let go, <laughs> you know. So, um, yeah, it's been a huge, huge learning for me. And it's really just freed me up. I, I think mm. it's been really mm. freeing. You know, you're always in, in control. I have to do this. I have, you know, but when you let it go and, and can't control it, <laughs> the universe tells you it's okay. You know, yeah. if things are going to work out the way they're supposed to work out. So that was, yeah. that was big for me. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. And like something like that and someone you love and a family member. But the, the surrender thing, I, I just think is the number one because it sort of shifts the I don't even say the gears of your life or just I don't know I I felt this sort of almost you know that game you often hear of that trust game where you have to fall back and trust someone will catch you yeah, there's a certain yeah. point where you can come back up and then there's a point where there is no going back and at yeah. that point you are trusting because of <laughs> you hit the floor exactly. um and can you remember like I have a very visual memory of like do you have a memory of a moment or is it for you just it's been a continual surrendering or how how has it sort of shown up for you um I think more so recently just because I've taken on more of the the spiritual journey you know more of the um, meditating going in listening to you know being silent you know, it's, it's a big thing when you have to sit in silence, um, lots of things come up, <laughs> right? Oh, for things. sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that little, you know, the brain is quiet, the little voice mm -hmm. comes louder. So I think just, you know, meditation has been huge. Um, I live by the beach, so I've been spending more time mm. at the beach, which is really healing as well and, and just very calming for me, very peaceful to be around the water. So, mm. yeah, I, those are a few things just and learning, you know, reading um, and maybe not. I've gone to church a couple of times, you know, but but not again, not about the religious. It's more about the spiritual, you know, mm. and, and knowing who who you are and what you want to do and, and reaching out to people, you know, connecting with people, not just doing it by yourself, working, yeah. you know, working with women and, and being, and find out what they're really doing. Yeah. And did you find that that started to happen? Cheryl? Like, cause I love what you say being very freeing because I think that is it. I think we're all, you know, in our own way, waking up to the fact that we are free, you know, in innately, we were born yeah. free and yeah. maybe for lots of different reasons to all the systems we grew up in and the beliefs and the families and everything we forget that and then we yeah. come back into this wow I am and I'm powerful and I I play a part in how my life turns out I think that's what you're saying you know it's yeah of so, yeah um so uh, so what then brought you on the path to doing the work now? So you're working with people. I know you're doing different types of work um, and you're involved in the book um, Ignite Joy and you've other work. So what got you into this sort of coaching? How did that all evolve into you doing this, which is courageous itself to do? <laughs> to step and maybe up a little and crazy it. too. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, fun, crazy, right? Wild, yeah. and crazy, and, yeah. and, and, and you know, honestly, with working with Ignite Publishing and and really looking at okay, what is it? Obviously, you know, becoming an international best-selling author changes how you think about yourself as well. It gives you confidence. It gives you belief in yourself, and people notice you. Okay, so I I started looking around and. And just really thinking, okay, what is there more that I can be doing? Okay, with with being 
part of the, the 262 Women's Summit as well, you know, supporting mm -hmm. women there. I just found, you know, there was a need for women wanting something more. Right. So and it's allowed me to be part of a community of, of people that are up to big things as well. So when you're around people that are doing good things, it it elevates you as well. You know, it brings you into that that energy of people of what they're doing. And so I just um, you know, with some support, um, mm -hmm. some people were just saying, you know what, this sounds like a like a good you know, come back. You've come back from so many adversities, so many things in your life. Why are you not sharing it with people, right? You know, because sometimes we, as when we just don't, right? We're like, oh, I'm just living my life. Nobody cares about what I'm doing mm -hmm. or, you know. So sharing my story also was a big part of that because I, I reached out to some people that I hadn't talked to in a long time. Like, you know, I knew they were there, but I hadn't talked to them in a long time. And they read my story and they got related to what I was doing. You know, what happened, you know, I know three people that said, oh, this happened to me too as a child, or I got bullied, or I lived in an abusive relationship, or, you know, whatever it is, they related to part of the story. So um, that was really huge to, to know that, okay, you know what, people are relating to what I'm doing and obviously need support to, you know, come out of whatever it is. Cause, um, you know, when you're, when you're in your bubble, you think that's all there is, all right. You know, you don't know anything else. And I've been there. I've mm -hmm. been there many times. I'm like, well, there's no hope here. Like what, but unless somebody from the outside comes in and says, okay, you know what, there is hope here. You know, you just need to do this. You need to be in action. You need to do whatever it is to get you moving forward to, to get going. Yeah. And when you say you, you talk there a bit about being in action and I sort of feel, you know, in one way, yes, I was in an awful lot of action when I was younger, but it was sort of, it was, some of it was quite destructive and some of <laughs> us was sort of a, on a yeah. treadmill of distraction. So to me, when I think of action, I think of it sort of being, is it sort of, is it sort of true to who I am? You know, I suppose right. that's the difference, isn't it? It's action that is because, you know, we have to do something as well as, yeah. you know, what you were saying, sitting and, and tuning in and connecting with us in whatever way that works for you, like going for a walk, doing, but sort of getting still so we can hear. But then yeah. it's like, yes, we have to, to get up and do something that sort of, you know, lines up with that voice maybe, isn't it? That intuitive voice. And is that, was that the first step then, that person that man, when you were out hiking that asked you, was that the start of it? Is that how all this got started, specifically that this direction? Um, yeah, you know, that was definitely part of it. Um, I think since I moved to Vancouver, I've really, you know, taken on changes. Like I've been around so many different people. I've done so many different things. And the person, you know, a mentor of mine really has helped me think differently to change my life to get me to where I was but I think yeah meeting this person you know definitely ha was a big factor in in believing and um just going being a yes you know what I just decided this year was about it being a yes and and <laughs> you know just taking on things that I've never taken on before and mm -hmm. and seeing where you know, trusting the process and uh, of where it's going and where it's taking me. And if it doesn't work, then you change it, right? Like you yeah. said, we're the creator of our own lives. And, and in any given day or any given moment, if we don't like what we're doing, do something differently. Like do, yeah. you know, something that makes you feel better to, mm. to do whatever it is to be in action. And, and you know what, action too, it could be good things or it could be bad things, you know, because I've been in action and done bad things. You know? We, <laughs> we know we're powerful when you know that you can do a lot of bad things and it has consequences. So we hope the good things have consequences too. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> that should show yeah. us our power really, shouldn't it? On reflection now when I think back. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I did a very good job. <laughs> well, you know what, I think we all have. Yeah, yeah. But that's yeah. what brings us to where we're at and, you know, 
our mind changes and we just decide we're gonna we're gonna do better and and be better and share what we're doing yeah uh, what are if you were yeah. to give the audience some sort of tips or advice because I know you work with women I think you say particularly around 40 to 60 is it but you're obviously open to <laughs> yeah also yeah, but that I suppose you know wherever it resonates with different people and um you know the right people always show up I believe but what sort of advice or tips or key things that you would say are really important to pay attention to if you've gone through or are going through something very difficult right now uh, a few things would be maybe uh, how you're feeling, you know, that is, you know, really sometimes we put our feelings aside and, and think, okay, we're feeling fine, we're, we're doing great, um, but we're not, not getting out of bed. Okay, so really, are you feeling fine? Well, you're feeling okay, but you're obviously, you know, whatever that is. Um, so, you know, definitely feelings would be, you know, one thing. Um, also, too, isolating, you know, am I isolating myself from my community, from my people? You know, am I avoiding not wanting to do things? You know, those are a couple of things that, you know, you could look for, um, you know, because when we're kind of in our funk or whatever it is, um, sometimes we don't want to talk to anybody. You know, I know I've been there, right? You know, yeah. We, just kind of shut down, put on the TV and don't do anything sort of thing. So, mm. yeah. yeah, it's quite, it's a very easy world to sort of numb out and distract ourselves in, isn't it? <laughs> it's, um, yeah. it's sort of designed, I sort of think that way to keep us nearly from who we really are, because, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it's very easy to stay away from the sort mm -hmm. of pain or how we're feeling by just, but did you feel as well just to just it strikes me there do you feel looking back do you think there's a lot of signs that we get along the way or did you feel you were just plunged into this or if you look back and you go gosh I probably was being guided and I'm not, I'm not saying this in any way as judgment but just yeah. in terms of now seeing oh yeah life was sort of pointing me or you know was sort of maybe nudging me in a direction do you feel now looking back that maybe there were signs or oh yeah there's always signs mm. you know there's you know always indicators you know especially when you're kind of down and out and and not thinking in the right thing but you, you mm. know there's always a sign of hope or somebody says something um you know it's just a matter of are you ready to um take it on right yeah. you know there's yeah many times where I've had signs and I've ignored them, right? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, unless you're really ready to make the change and take on, because it's not easy, you know, it's, mm. you know, there's always signs to point you in a different direction. It's just a matter of whether you take those signs and, and, and take the leap, you know, and, and really do that. Yeah. And there is, I believe, well, I feel for myself, rather than looking back with regret and not even regret and saying maybe I could have done that sooner it's yeah. no there's sort of a divine timing I feel in our lives there's sort of a design yes we free will and yes you know it's up to us and with there's lots of possibilities but mm -hmm. there is sort of a there is a timing I think isn't there as well to you know maybe when when we're ready as you said you know I was just gonna say that <laughs> you were like reading my mind it's like yeah it's you, whether we're ready to take that on okay mm -hmm. you know because like if you're not ready you can see all the signs in the world but if you're not willing to take them and, and move on to whatever it is like just like financially if you're not ready to be financially free mm -hmm. or if you're not ready to go to the gym you know, and exercise and take on your health, you know, sometimes a health scare, and as you probably know, um, you know, wakes us up to go, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, what's going on here, right, you know, so. I was a slow learner, <laughs> I had a fair few warning signs before that, but no, it, it, you know, I say that jokingly, it was still really difficult, but yeah, you know, sometimes that is what it is, because I often say, or I, I'm just thinking about it now, I couldn't have probably got out of my life any 
you know, the life I was living in any yeah. other way because a number of things happened, but there were only short term measures. I needed something that would take me out for a few years so I could be. And I mean, yes, you know, so, so sometimes something big has to happen. It's almost yeah. like a bigger surrender, isn't there? And there's a bigger, you know, there's a bigger transition and gift. Well, gifts, hopefully on the other side. And yeah. If, if, so in doing this, you know, and, and and changing your life so dramatically and being so brave and you're very, um, I suppose, which is realize you're very sort of matter of fact about it. You know, you don't uh, you don't strike me as someone maybe who would sort of dwell too much on something or, you know, because you mm. use the words responsibility and <laughs> a lot. So I get the sense that that's quite important to you or independence. Was that a big part of it sounds like your journey as well from after your marriage. Uh, oh yeah, it, it definitely was. You know, I've done some self development on myself courses and and things like that where um, it was like a light bulb went off where you finally realize that nobody's coming to rescue you and that you are you know because sometimes women we think oh our husband should save us or you know somebody should take care of us. But once you get the realization that you are taking care of yourself, <laughs> right, it's huge. And you are responsible. It's like, oh, my God, I'm responsible for that? You know, I created that? <laughs> mm. You you really, it's it's a different kind of feeling. And I, I, unless you've experienced it, it's hard really to describe it. But it's mm. just... It's, it's like, like you're free. It's, it's like, like okay, yeah. I am, and I am taking on the responsibility of my life. I am my finances, mm. you know, cleaning things up, getting things going in a different direction. So, yeah, responsibility, I think, was a huge one for me because I always depended on other people. Okay, yeah. God, I just, yeah, that's so, it's it sort of, yeah, really rings true for me as well. And the freedom that comes with it on the other side because it can seem... I would have thought that was an awful, you know, a difficult way to look at life. Oh, my God, I'm responsible. But in another way, it shows you how powerful you are, because yeah. mm -hmm. if I created and I would say and I don't say this in any light way, but I yeah. know the cancer for me was the culmination of of my life, my emotional state, everything. And that was mm -hmm. all unconscious. So it's not a criticism, citizen, yeah. criticism. But it actually when I sort of really felt that I said, wow, this is how powerful I'm, I am. You know, like we said, we can yeah. create pretty disastrous situations in our lives. We can create the good. And yeah. was, was the whole, because it's always, I think, a bit of a subject that people often don't like to, well, I don't know, it's, it's you have to be careful around is the whole abundance or money or financial independence. Was that a big, because, you know, we all have to live, uh, you know, yeah. we live in a world where at the moment you have to pay for things. So was that a diff? Did you find that a big shift for you to sort of really step into that? Uh, yeah, because I was I was not responsible of my money. Okay, I was giving it away, spending it, not not doing. You know, I had debt that wasn't being paid off, and so uh, until I started cleaning things up and putting things back into integrity, which, you know, things were out of integrity. My credit card got taken away, you know, I was behind on payments, whatever, whatever that looks like. Once you start putting the integrity and putting things in place and being your word and keeping, you know, doing what you're doing, um, the universe gives you more, you know? So once I cleaned all of that up and, got debt free at one point i had no bills other than my living expenses so wow. you know that's, that's a, nice that's a huge yeah <laughs> wow that's incredible yeah. yeah yeah for you know a couple of years all i had i had i chose not to have a credit card i had no car payments i had nothing but my living expenses so that enabled me to put some money away to start saving paying myself first and really built my confidence and belief around money, you know? Mm -hmm. So am I where I want to be right now? No, but I'm on my way, you know, mm -hmm. like I'm definitely much better than I was three years ago. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think that was, was huge of just putting things back in mm -hmm. integrity, you know, cause without integrity, nothing works. Yeah. And I like yeah. that as well. I think, you know, there is, there is the one side of it which is all you know and and sort of the world 
we've grown up in, which is almost idolize money at the cost of integrity, let's say, or the intention behind it or what it's about yeah. and what is energy or what is money? Because that was a big I don't know how you see it, but it was a big shift for me as well to start seeing money as a whole energy. Money is just a piece of paper, but it's an energy of exchange. Yeah. And I think mm. when you start to get that, I was very slow getting it. I'm still getting it. You then, yeah. because that then brings you to, doesn't it, to self-worth? Yeah. Well, am I deserving? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Am I deserving of that? Like, did that come up as part of your, um, as you say, changing that relationship you had with money yeah. and finances? Was that a part yeah. of it? Yeah, it definitely does. does. You know, I think as, as kids growing up, I, you know, I didn't, my family was not rich, you know, so you always get those beliefs that money doesn't grow on trees, you got to work hard for money, you know, do you deserve it? So, you know, I see that pattern from an early age of, you know, not saving my money, investing, you know, for the future. I didn't think about 60, okay? So, you know, I didn't think about 40 becoming single. You don't think about the, these things when, when you don't, get related to your money and have a, a a good relationship with it but it definitely is energy and one thing that I started doing was using cash okay mm. to, to pay for things because mm. when you circulate it it comes back to you mm. okay really but when like you that. hoard it like you don't use it you know the universe said okay you you don't need money okay but mm. so and I've seen it you know I'll use $20 to pay for something and then I'll get, you know, $40 back or something, you know what I mean? Just something like that, but using it and circulating, like you said, it's an energy mm -hmm. and you have to build that relationship with money to think, you know what, it's okay to have money. Money yeah. is a good tool to have. Yeah. In the world we're in now, who knows, maybe in the future, hopefully we won't. <laughs> it could be a different yeah. form of exchange, but exactly. I, yeah. I, that's, yeah. yeah. I, I think that's, that's been a huge part of my experience. Like, you know, you go through something difficult and like you said, okay, maybe you surrender into it and things start to happen, but then all these other, what I've noticed, all these layers of things that you're like, yeah. you're suddenly asked to look at, okay, well, is this really what you think of yourself? And this and I would have had a similar relationship with money. I either had a lot and I just didn't even know, understand what to do. I just spent it like I it, yeah. it was a really so I had to be brought back. And I'm, I'm grateful for that into a very it's really that relationship with yourself mm -hmm. and and the energy. And has that. So, yeah, so you that has shifted, obviously, a lot for you. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, from what it, you're saying, it's yeah. huge. Yeah. yeah. You know, like before I always had to borrow money from people like I didn't mm. have enough money. So, you know, it's it's not I, I don't do that anymore. It's like, OK, you know what? You are responsible for it. You know, if you spend it and you don't have it, that's your responsibility. Mm. Right. Mm. And, you know, mm. again, it comes down to that responsible for yourself that light bulb that went off and and that's everywhere that's your health that's your finances that's mm. your that's everything that you are responsible for yeah and do you think that's part of a bigger shift that's happening sort of collectively on the planet like that we are i think many people well who come on this podcast or i talk to or whatever would sort of recognize there is a shift happening in consciousness oh, yeah. you know and i think whatever way you what you want to call it but we're feeling it. I think everybody's. So do you do you sense that that how do you see that or understand that now or like what is actually happening in the world collectively? Um, you know, I, I think people are waking up. I think people are not um, listening to what everyone else is telling us. You know, I, I, I think over, you know, the shutdown was a huge global thing for people. And, you know, we're just now sort of coming out of that. Not for me. I, I didn't buy into it when when it was going on. I did my thing and I did, you know, what I needed to do. Um, but I think people now are waking up and realizing maybe, you know, there's some things around that. Um, you know, and so they're now going, okay, well, this is not what I want to be doing. This is, you know, what not where I want to be. Mm. I want to do something differently. So, and they're doing it on a massive scale, not just one-on-one -on -one like you and I, 
Um, but as a group, maybe as a country, as a whatever it is, mm -hmm. right? And that's why there's such a big shift of people waking up. I know it's 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 like I don't know how you I I feel there were many people like obviously you have to go through your own awakening like through whatever you go through in your life you have your own yeah. rattling and it's like as you said in 2020 and all of that and other things that were now you know I think you have to be able to see it in this is my experience I had to be yeah. able to face it and see it in my own life and my own sort of um shadow for want of a better word you know to be able to then start that that then when you start to know I don't know if this is you would share this when you start to realize how powerful you are and like you said and responsible and we create our lives and then the world is telling you a very different story I think that's mm -hmm. the common thread through the people I'm meeting it can be right. it doesn't matter your age gender background anything it's like it started inside is that what you would see like that's I feel that the common thread I don't know what is if there is um... yeah you know what I, I feel that too you know people um were buying into things but then they're like no this isn't working for me possibly you know now I can just do what what I want whatever that is in your life right whether mm. it's mm. whatever traveling mm. whatever that is um you know for each of each of us to know you know and yeah that's you know that's what happens when we wake up because it starts with us I guess right and I don't want to say wake up but just something yeah. goes off inside of you that you decide I'm not doing this anymore mm. okay and yeah it, it is different for each of us right yeah. whatever that point is it's not the same for everybody yeah I know. Yeah. And I think yeah. that is about go without laboring this point, but I think that's a big part of it's a very interesting stage to see because we are all, yeah, everybody is very unique. There'll be different things that will happen in our lives. And it's how yeah. we sort of navigate all of that together. But I do what what I love is the fact that you're, you know, sharing your story, like that feels a big I, you know, I know we're not our story, but I think the fact that we yeah. can talk about it. And learn from it is the key to helping other people. And yeah. I just from listening to you before as well, it sounds like people did people come to you? Is this how it apart from I know you've you know, you've met people, but did people who would hear your story start coming and saying, gosh, I've been through that. Like it happened quite organically from the sounds of it. Um, yeah, I've had a few, you know, obviously I'm not. Share. I haven't shared with a lot of people. Yeah. I, I'm sharing, but you know, the more that I start sharing, um, the more that the word is getting out. And you know what? It's just like anything. If you share with people, um, you never know who's watching you, right? You're always being observed from somewhere that you don't know about. <laughs> you know, I've had people come to me, you know, and say, "Oh, I've heard about you." And it's like, "Oh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's yeah. great." You know. Yeah. But, you know, you just never know who's watching and who's. So yeah, people come to me. I I'm a big connector. I like to go out and meet people, put people you know together, and and really just share that way as well. Because we're all you know struggling with something in our lives, and we just never know what that something is until we start talking to people. And so by you know me sharing my story in my book. People are like, oh, I can relate to that. I can relate to that. You know what I mean? So it's just, yeah. it's about sharing. Yeah, I I totally, yeah, feel the same. I And I feel we're, we're almost, it's like us talking here today. If you had wanted to plan that, you couldn't because, you know, yeah. everything and every person I have had on the podcast and every situation is just organically, well, you know, happened through yeah. sort of working with, the universe and mm -hmm. listening and listening to that voice inside the voice that wants the best you do you. some work as well around mindset and stuff and do you feel that's a big is that a big part of you know even the chapter you wrote in that book like what would you take what would be a big takeout in terms of you know what people um may want to focus on 